Hi everyone, this is Mukta Sharma. In this video, we will discuss about defect severity and defect priority in software testing. This is on-demand video. Many of you have asked me on my YouTube channel as well as on um, LinkedIn uh, that you know I should prepare this topic for you. So if you are looking for defect life cycle video or the defect management process, then please go and check the long video on the channel. This particular video is only about defect severity and defect priority. I will provide a link to that long video. So first, let's understand what is a defect. You have function requirement document, you have business requirement documents, and you have started designing your test scenarios Based on those test scenarios, you have identified some test cases and now you're doing test execution. When you do your test execution, you will come across some defects, right? Defects are the deviations from client expectation. You are testing one feature where the expected result is uh, different, which is not matching with your actual result. In that scenario, you will raise a defect. Whereas if you are working in agile software development process, you will not have function requirement documents or business requirement document, you know, any such documents. Rather, you will have user stories. User stories are associated with acceptance criteria, which you will have to analyze. And then based on the analysis and brainstorming with the team, you will start designing your uh, feature files if you are using Cucumba BDD in your uh, test project, right? So that is about defect. Now let's understand what is defect severity. So uh, try to understand the meaning, the uh, context of defect severity and defect priority first, so that later point of time, if you come across any defects, you will be able to identify the severity and the priority of defect by yourself. If you're, you know, if that understanding about the concept is clear, so defect severity means how severe the defect is, how badly it is impacting the functionality of your product, the impact of issue on the functionality of the software or the product. So as we can see, if the impact is more, then there is uh, more impact on the business, right? In terms of business. If the impact is low, that means the business will not be impacted that much. So you have to think about the impact level. That's why it it is categorized into multiple levels like uh, high impact, medium impact, low impact, you know, like that. Now let's understand what is defect priority. Priority means how urgent it needs to be fixed. How urgent it needs to be fixed. If it is impacting on the business to a significant level, that means it should be fixed immediately. If the impact is low, then maybe it can be fixed at later point of time. That's why we have different levels of priority also assigned with us. So here I have written different level of uh, defect severity, different levels of defect severity. So S E D E R I T Y defect level uh, different level of defect severity high medium low and different level of defect priority p1 p2 p3 p4 i i have considered p1 as blocker p2 major p3 low and p4 cosmetics maybe in your company you have some p1 p2 p3 only like that but you know we should understand the categorization like on the higher level medium level low level it could be uh, it could be one or more level extra or you know in your uh, test project or in your uh, test process but try to understand the concept okay try to understand the fundamentals behind this why we do that and what is the reason behind that so now let's talk about the different examples so i have written four examples here yes let's discuss the first one so here we are talking about high priority and low severity can you give me one example where you have high priority and low severity? So let us just assume that interviewer asks you this question. Uh, give me one example of high priority and low severity. That time, don't get confused. You should think about the you know um, meaning first. Like, 
low severity means the impact on the business is low means the impact on the functionality of the software is low but high priority means it needs to be fixed immediately so do you have any such scenario in mind one scenario which i can think of is company brand image company brand image or logo you know you can say like that i don't want to take any company's name but okay let's just say abc company is there and uh, in abc there is some uh, something is written uh, down below like dreams come true when you do hard work and then hard work there is a spelling mistake over there in terms of functionality there is no issue right that is just a tagline of the company but about the uh, the brand image about the company image it is it is impacting right so in that case we will say the severity is low but the priority is high it should be fixed immediately because it is company's brand image right i hope you understood the context now let's move on to the second example so here we are talking about high priority and high severity so you should think about um, high severity that means the impact on the business is very high and the priority is also very high so the impact on the functionality of the software is high and it should be fixed immediately what it could be it could be something like app crash or app hang as soon as you launched one app you you launched one app in some browser and the app is crashed or maybe you just log in and the app is crashed right or maybe you just log in you went to some page and the on the next page the app got hang so it needs to be immediately fixed right so now let's take the third example what is the example of low priority and low severity don't look at the screen and just think low severity means the impact on the uh, application functionality is low and the priority is also low obviously when the impact is low i mean there there could be some scenarios where the functionality the impact of that particular defect which you have found on the uh, product it is low and the priority is also low so examples could be alignment issues maybe you are on some page and you are seeing that um, and testing insights by mukta sharma and on on this channel you will find information related to interview question and answers interview question and answers related to you know hr and everything and the alignment is not proper then that time you will say ki um, you will say the priority is low and the severity is also very low because you know uh, the videos that i prepare for you um, so you will not mind the little miss alignment right so this is low priority and low severity or the another example could be text misspelling on the page on a website which you are checking maybe on the home page or maybe in some other page like you know deals deals or gift ideas something like that is there and uh, in idea there is e missing so in that case you will say this is low priority and low severity because the impact of that particular feature on the business is low and it can be fixed a little bit later it is not that urgent fourth example the last one low priority and high severity can you give me one example where do you see low priority and high severity high severity means the impact of this particular issue on the functionality of the software is high and priority is low even though the impact is high but the priority is low what could be that scenario so let us just assume few hyperlinks in the app are not working those links which are rarely used in the app you have you are testing one app first page second page this page and then finally you let's say you went to you reach at contact us page on the contact us page there are some people link right people manager culture manager hr manager and this and that so you click on that link and that link is not working you are a good tester you found this issue and now what will you do this is low priority right this is not that urgent to be fixed but it is high severity because it is impacting um, it is impacting on the business on the company like there are key people whose reference are given but those links are not working so in that case you will say low priority and high severity 
and one more example which i i thought like before preparing this video i was thinking about some real time examples and then one more which has happened with me so um, i was doing some online shopping some time ago and uh, i i added around 50 or 50 plus items in my cart i thought i, I will shortlist those 50 items from the cart so let me just add so whatever i was liking i was adding in the cart but what happened as soon as it reached 50 the app got crashed the app got hanged so i mean i i literally had to um, uninstall and then um, reinstall the app so i was thinking um, you know what could be the priority or the severity in this case in this case i think we can take it as high severity because the impact on the functionality is very high but priority could be medium or low because um, everybody like nobody else will add 50 items there could be only few users who would try to add 50 or 60 or 100 items in the cart right generally like most of the time we add like 10 or 15 or 5 as a normal you know um, shopping experience we add less maybe uh, their tester would not have tested this scenario like you know add 50 items in the cart or 100 items in the cart and then check so i was thinking maybe this example we can consider for um uh, for this um, this example, low priority, high severity, what do you think? So uh, please do some analysis on this example, which I have given, and let me know in the comments, what do you think? Can Should we consider this example as low uh, priority and high severity? Or do you think people, uh, like, um, um, more people do, like, you know, 50 items add in the cart and do try to do the checkout? And then there is one more thing which I wanted to discuss, defect leakage ratio. You know, sometimes in interview, they may ask you what is defect leakage ratio or maybe when you are, you know, when you reach to a higher level like test manager or um, lead uh, level, you have to, um, you know, extract some reports and uh, present it to management. So if you are working in traditional waterfall approach, you know, then you will understand the defect triage and defect management processes, defect report, you have to generate defect reports. I have worked into that. So I came across, you know, all these different things, which always I have always heard of. So defect leakage ratio is count of defects missed by team divided by total number of defects in the system, multiply by 100, it will give you defect leakage percentage. And then as per the uh, project process or as per the you know, uh, final confirmation from your uh, project stakeholders, you will have some dedicated ratio here, like it should be around five to 10% or minimum less than five. And based on that, you will come to a conclusion that you know the uh, application looks good. So if the total number of defects in the system are 100 and count of defects missed by your team, let's say your team has missed 20 defects. So 20 divided by um, 100 into 100 you do and that 20% you will get. So that is a defect leakage ratio. That means it is very high. That means still the system has defects. This, this is called defect leakage ratio. It means how many defects got missed from testing and it went to production. This comes later in the stage after UAT. Okay, and uh, defect life cycle video. If you're interested to know different stages about defect, I will provide a link in the description. Please check the link. And uh, so let's quickly do a recap of what we have discussed today. This video is only about defect severity and defect priority, where we have discussed what is the meaning, what is the concept of defect severity, defect priority, what are the different level? How do we categorize uh, defect severity and priority? And we have discussed examples, different examples in terms of real time, like high priority, low severity, high priority, high severity, low priority, low severity, low priority, high severity. And we have also discussed about defect leakage ratio. I hope this video will be helpful to you. If you have any more questions on the same, please write them in the comments and please let me know if you like the video because I have really spent a good amount of time to segregate those examples for you. I will see you in the next video. Until then, please take care of yourself. Bye.